in Syria, uh, there's obviously a lot of questions about who the rebels are, what do they represent. There's multiple factions of the rebels. We all know that. Um, there certainly is Al-Qaeda, Islamic militant groups. There's also uh, moderates. There's liberals. There's progressives. There's members who've defected from the Syrian government. Uh, there's a number of different actors. But what you might not know and what might surprise many of you is that a significant part of the roots of the grassroots uprising against uh, the Assad government and a uh, group that is still playing an active role in the formation of a new Syrian politics are Syrian anarchists. And uh, Truth Out caught up with a leader for the Syrian uh, anarchist, uh, or a Syrian anarchist organizer and writer named, uh, excuse me, where was his name? His name is uh, Nadir, Nadir Atassi. And he's a political uh, researcher and writer who's originally from Homs in Syria and currently splits his time between the United States and Beirut. And he runs a blog called Darth Nader, which reflects on the Syrian revolution. Uh, and he said some really interesting things. First, about the role that anarchists have played in the formation of the uprising in Syria. And basically, the Syrian anarchists, what allowed them to start organizing was some restrictions that the Assad government relaxed several years ago, not for protests against the Assad government or the state, but for protests um, against around uh, U.S. occupation and invasion of Iraq and in solidarity with the Palestinians. So anarchists started organizing on college campuses in Syria around these issues and uh, connected them with opposition to Assad. So that's sort of some of the kind of political context that they come from. Uh, and he basically explains that the real point, and I think this is so fascinating because in some ways Syria is a template for everything right now. You have uh, an Assad government, which really is in some respects a kind of almost classically fascist type of regime model. Ba'athists were inspired by totalitarian regimes in Europe. There's remnants of that along with a kind of crony, small-scale capitalist uh, state uh, a lot of self, basically market self enrichment and cronyism with a fascistic uh, political structure. Then you have these broad based movements, which include the rise of Islamic militancy and groups like Al Qaeda. Then you just have people from the regime who don't support anymore. Then you have uh, liberals. Then you have the client state dimension, the proxy war dimension, that Syria is just a place for other nations to project their interests on Russia, Iran, the United States, the Gulf. Israel, whatever, proxy war component. And what uh, uh, Atari is saying is that, Atasi, excuse me, what Atasi is saying is that anarchists want genuine self-determination. And they don't just even mean at the, micro, at the national level, they're anarchists, so they're talking about a micro-level politics. They're organizing in certain areas that are liberated where they have some power. They're talking about community decision-making. They're talking about collective forms of governance uh, and multiple forms of self-expression. So he says we, we oppose Assad because he wants to totalize and control our identities, and we oppose uh, the Islamic fundamentalists because they also see one way uh, of controlling and governing and, and conforming Syrian society. So I think basically... He says this is about decentralization and it's about radical self-determination, not just at a national level but even at a localized level. And I think this is fascinating because you're seeing some parallels here in the politics he's talking about in this incredibly violent and dangerous environment to what people when they're occupy or something are called out for being utopian and impractical. Well, these people are trying to implement this politics uh, in, in one of the most dangerous zones uh, in the planet right now. Uh, so he, he goes on. Uh, he talks about why it's false to see the opposition as a binary uh, just between the, uh, the Syrian regime uh, and, 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 and other rebel forces opposed to Assad, that the movement opposing Assad is much more, um, is much broader. And he actually talks about a city that uh, called Yerbrad, which is halfway between Damascus and Homs, and is quote and is the quote the Syrian uprisings commune and also a model of sectarian coexistence uh, and a model of autonomy and self governance. It's a fascinating, and there's a YouTube video that accompanies it that I recommend everybody watch. Moving on, they ask him about U.S. intervention, and he basically says the problem with U.S. intervention was that it would be a, a uh, it, it wouldn't change that much on the ground and it would be a propaganda coup for the government 
to assert that they're fighting against imperialists when really they're just the patron of a different imperialist interest uh, in Syria. Uh, so he was very critical of the idea of attacks in Syria um, and has said there's not much that can be done from his viewpoint to intervene one way or another in Syria from his anarchist viewpoint. Although he did say that what he would want from people in the left outside of Syria is he says... And I'm just going to read this to wrap this up. For people outside, it's tough. In terms of, of material support, there's very little that can be done. The only thing that I think that is possible in a large, is a large-scale discursive and intellectual support. The left has been very hostile to the Syrian uprising, treating the worst elements of anti-regime activists as if they were all the only elements of it and accepting the regime's narrative at face value. This is what I've been objecting to so strenuously. Uh, and everybody on the show has been obje objecting to. What I'd ask people to do is help set the record straight and show that there are elements of the Syrian uprising that are worth supporting. Help break that harmful binary decision between Assad or Al-Qaeda, Assad and U.S. imperialism. Be, be fair to the history and sacrifices of the Syrian people by giving it an accurate account. Perhaps it's too late and the hegemonic narratives are too powerful in the present to overcome, but if people start, maybe the history books can at least be fair. I think that's one of the most moving yes. statements that I've ever read about this conflict. And frankly, I actually choked up a little bit when I was reading this. And I, there are people on the ground there fighting against every sort of odds because they're fighting basically against every political economic pathology imaginable. And they deserve our accounting and our support.